In this video, we'll be covering how to optimize the throughput for SSL VPN. You might wonder, why do we need to optimize it? If you've used any of the mobile VPN options on the Firebox before, you may have noticed that the SSL VPN is the slowest option. This is because the OpenVPN server running on the Firebox is only single-threaded. Furthermore, because SSL VPN is the only non-IPsec-based mobile VPN, it also doesn't make use of the special IPsec cryptography acceleration that is available to all the other VPN types. This means it is using the CPU on the Firebox in order to do the encryption. So let's jump into the configuration and see what we can do to optimize it. In order to do that, I will go to VPN, Mobile VPN, SSL. As you notice, I've already configured this and if you need assistance configuring SSL VPN from scratch, please check out our other videos and documentation. So the first decision you need to make is whether or not you want to use the default full tunnel option, which is this force all client traffic through tunnel option here, or if you would like to use split tunnel. Full tunnel is generally far more secure, but because you are tunneling all of the remote user's internet traffic through the Firebox, obviously it's going to use more bandwidth. The other consideration here is the total number of users that are connecting through the Firebox. You need to look at the number of local users you have, as well as the number of remote users you have. Sending all of their internet traffic through the Firebox will put added burden on the proxies and services, so you need to account for that. If you're already maxing out that Firebox or you're near the user limit, you might need to use Split Tunnel until you upgrade to a new model, but for now, I will just leave the Full Tunnel option. Moving on, if you click on the Advanced tab, the first thing you'll see here are the encryption options. These are the defaults that we have today, but if you need to speed things up, you're probably better off using one of the GCM ciphers. You can see in the list here, there are three options, the AES GCM 128, 192, and 256. Using one of these GCM ciphers is advantageous for two reasons. The first is, as I mentioned earlier, the CPU on the Firebox is used for the encryption when you're using the SSL VPN. Most modern CPUs have a special instruction set it will calculate the AES GCM cipher more quickly than the classic AES CBC. Secondly, if I were to choose one of these, you will notice that the authentication section is now grayed out and I can't select anything. This is because the GCM cipher has authentication built in already, which means I do not need to use a separate SHA algorithm to do that calculation, so it actually saves some CPU cycles there as well. Feel free to test out different encryption levels to see what works best on your Firebox. Each model has a different type of CPU, so you may see different results. The next option to look at is the data channel. This is another thing that can help increase the throughput on the VPN. You'll notice right now that the configuration channel is grayed out, and that I have an option to change the protocol for the data channel so I will select UDP. Now that I've selected that, the configuration channel is no longer gray, and I can independently configure ports for both the data channel and the configuration channel. By changing the data channel to UDP, I'm removing the overhead that is associated with the TCP protocol. Additionally, you have to consider that the data passing through that tunnel may already be TCP. If you are sending a lot of TCP data through the tunnel, then TCP will already have the mechanism to retransmit any packets that may be lost if you're using UDP for the encapsulation. Whereas before, if we were to use TCP for the data channel, that can introduce a problem where if a packet is lost in transit over the internet, the tunnel's TCP protocol would notice that that packet is lost, as well as your application that's sending data through the tunnel. That means you may end up with a double retransmit. The tunnel itself retransmits the packet, and your application retransmits the packet, which is, again, more overhead and more burden on the Firebox as well as the client. 
So by switching to UDP, you're removing that potential problem as well. However, by changing this to UDP and using port 443, you may run into a problem where this traffic may not be allowed from the remote locations that your users are connecting from. Though these days UDP 443 is pretty common because it is used for the quick protocol that most modern web browsers use by default. If you know that that port and protocol are not available at the remote site, you can change this to a different port that is more likely to be open. For example, if I were to change this to 53, it is very likely that UDP 53 is open at the other site because that is used for DNS. You may even be able to use UDP 123 or a variety of other ports, but just make sure that it is something that will work at the remote location. Keep in mind though that for the configuration channel, you typically want to leave this on TCP 443. The reason for that is because the configuration channel is the one that is used to set up the tunnel and it does use HTTPS in order to perform the authentication and allow the client to download the SSL VPN configuration file. But because that is only used to set up the initial connection, not to transfer the data, this will typically work through remote sites that are filtering HTTPS traffic because it is legitimate HTTPS connections being made from the client to the Firefox. Whereas the data channel is not HTTPS traffic, even if you are using the default TCP port 443. And the last piece to consider down here, although it is not directly related to throughput, you need to make sure that the proper DNS servers are being assigned because if there are DNS servers that are at a remote location or DNS servers that have a lot of latency or loss, then that will appear to be slowness to the users that are connected on the VPN. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to use your local DNS servers behind the Firebox for your remote users so they can resolve internal domain names and resources. To wrap things up here, Remember that a full tunnel does require more bandwidth because you are processing those remote users' internet traffic as well. So if you are using a full tunnel, you need to consider the total number of users connected through the Firebox, both internally and externally. That way you get an idea of the overall load being put on the Firebox and the proxies and services. As a reminder, I would highly encourage you to test the different encryption options to see how they perform on your specific hardware because different fireboxes have different types of CPUs. And lastly, UDP is faster, but you need to be aware of the port that you're gonna be using to allow those remote clients to connect in. Choosing something like UDP port 53 is likely going to be open at the remote location. And it's also a good idea to test the UDP performance for your specific applications. Keep in mind that the data channel traffic is never HTTPS to begin with, whether you're using TCP or UDP, so it also doesn't play well with certain types of HTTPS filtering, like the HTTPS proxy on the Firebox. So if you know the remote locations have something like that, then UDP may actually be a better option to get these connections out through those remote networks. For more information on SSL VPN, please check out the WatchGuard technical search.